Hi, it's Jan from YouMakeItSimple.com here with another sewing tutorial where I'm going to show you how to get an overlock stitch without using a serger. I'll show you several different stitches on your sewing machine that you can use to get a nice finished seam on your sewing projects. I will admit having a serger is ideal and that is something if you don't have one now, maybe you're a beginner sewer and you don't have access to a, a serger yet, someday you can get one. There are still ways and options to get a nice finished seam without using a serger. So what a serger does is it cuts off as you sew and finishes the edges so they don't fray. You may be wondering why you even need to finish off your seam. If you're sewing on a woven fabric, the edges will fray, especially after washing. The threads will start coming off and fraying and you don't want, eventually that will open up the seam and all the work that you've done will come undone. So it's important in a lot of situations to finish off the seam. You can do this with a serger and the edge will, finished edge will look like this. It will cut and overlock the edge real quickly and give you a nice finished edge. But if you don't have access to that, there are still some simple ways that you can finish off those edges. And I'm gonna show you how to do that with your basic sewing machine. So let's go over some of those stitches. The first stitch that we'll go over that you can use is a zigzag stitch. So basically it's just a straight stitch that we've changed the width of the stitch and, and it will go back and forth as indicated in this particular, on this machine. All you'll need to do on a non-digital machine is change the width. So the wider I change the width, it will start zigzagging back and forth. Zero will be a straight stitch. So on a machine like this, just change your width and I would go to a four or a four to five. So you want a wide stitch and the length, I'm going to take it down to one and a half. On a digital machine, it will give you different options for zigzag. So this is just your basic zigzag stitch. I could change the width if I wanted to and I am going to add and make that wider to four and a half. The length is where I want it. So after adjusting the settings on the machine for your zigzag stitch, I'm going to place the fabric underneath and we want the edge of the needle to come right to the edge of the fabric. So we're going to be going back and forth along the edge. So to tell where you're at, just turn your hand wheel towards you so you can see how wide and I need to come a little closer to the edge. There we go. So once you have that established, you can just start sewing. So you can see how I was right against the edge and that will keep that from fraying. To make this a little more secure and a nicer finish, you can add another row of a single stitch right there along the edge of the zigzag. So a seam that you would see like this would be like on a pair of denim jeans or a seam that is real, that you need to be really secure and sturdy and that will take that needs a little bit more reinforcement. So another option. Let's go back to this open, pressed open seam. What if I wanted to finish off these edges? I'll show you on one side just a regular zigzag stitch. So that's what your finished edge with a zigzag. And if, if it's just a regular lightweight cloth, this would this should be fine. So another option is to do an actual overlock stitch that your machine will have. 
and there'll be an overlock. Most of your machines will have an overlock stitch foot and it will look like this. It has this little extended edge on the back. This is what it will look like. And this just guides your fabric on this edge. It keeps your fabric lined up with the edge so that we'll, it will overlock where it needs to. What's nifty about this machine is it's going to tell me what presser foot I need to use for what stitch. It's going to have me use the overlock stitch foot. When I choose this stitch, it's going back to the basic presser foot. I'll change the foot. And so what it will look like, so on the first option I'm going to show you is this stitch here. It has the look of a zigzag and the straight stitch, but it will do it all in the same step. So the width, as you can see, is a five. That's a wide stitch and the length would be two and a half. So I'll just place my fabric underneath the presser foot with the edge of the fabric aligned with that edge of the presser foot. This is where this presser foot comes in handy. It's going to guide your fabric. Keeping that fabric butt up against that little edge there. So it does your zigzag and that straight stitch. But you can see that it's a very narrow seam allowance. If you needed a wider seam allowance, you're going to have to account for that. Your most basic sewing machines are going to have this stitch. So it's an overlock stitch. You can add the presser foot if you wanted to. It does make it helpful. And what I really love about this overlock stitch is when you use it on knit fabric, it will allow the fabric to stretch without the seam popping, which if, it, if you were just using a straight stitch, if I were to pull that, the seam would pop and come undone, and you don't want that. So this is another option to sew on knit fabric, which I really love. So the next option would be to use this slanted ladder looking stitch. And that will give you a really nice finished edge and also add stretch. So it just depends, I just preference. Let's show you what that looks like. Putting my fabric just along the edge of the presser foot, begin sewing. that stitch. So ideally we would want that, you could trim that off down to the edge, but and, and that say that was your seam allowance. If I wanted to trim that off first, so you could trim that off, making sure not to cut the stitches like that, or you could trim it off before. Which I prefer to do. So it just is just preference of what you want. This also works well on knit fabric. So pretty straightforward and some great options of getting that overlock stitch without having to the expense of a serger or, or if you just don't have access to one. 
Thanks for watching. Make sure you subscribe to the channel and stay tuned for upcoming tutorials where I make sewing simple. We'll see you next time.